topic is gingivectomy. Now, what is gingivectomy? Gingivectomy is an excisional removal of your gingival tissue for pocket reduction or elimination. So basically, it's a surgical procedure which is used to remove or excise your gingiva in order to reduce the pocket or to eliminate the pocket. Now, what is gingivoplasty? Now, gingivoplasty means reshaping or recontouring of the gingiva in order to attain a more physiological contour that allows for a beautiful, uh, that allows for a good maintenance of oral hygiene. Gingivoplasty, the tissue is thin interproximally in order to produce a more harmonious contour with the interproximal slice airways and then it helps in easy passage of food. Gingivectomy and gingivoplasty are usually performed at the same time. What are the rationale for doing the gingivectomy or gingivoplasty procedures? Again, first would be the uh, pocket elimination or pocket reduction for, bet better uh, for pocket elimination for gaining a better access to the root surface pocket elimination for a root accessibility and to establish a physiological gingival contours. What are the indications of gingivectomy? First thing, it should be, you should have suprabony pockets. You should not have any kind of, uh, the indications for your gingivectomy procedure include your suprabony pockets, adequate width of attached gingiva, at least three millimeters of zone of keratinous gingiva should be present in order to perform any gingivectomy procedure. Your bone loss should be a horizontal pattern of bone loss and not any vertical pattern of bone loss. You should have a gingival enlargement and then you should have areas of limited access. It's also indicated in unesthetic or asymmetrical gingival topographical situations and then for exposure of the soft tissue impaction to enhance an orthodontic tooth movement or to enhance eruption at times, to facilitate restorative dentistry, to establish physiological and gingival contours post your uh, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and flap procedures. What are the contraindications? When you don't have an adequate zone of attached gingiva or a keratinized gingiva, you don't go to attempt to doing a gingivectomy procedure. And then in infra bony defects, wherein you have a vertical pattern of bone loss, again, you don't go to attempt doing your gingivectomy procedures. Apart from that, if you have pockets extending beyond your mucogingival line, then don't go to do gingivectomy procedure. Highly inflamed or edematous nature, first control the inflammation and then reevaluate the status. If still the fibrotic content is still left of the gingival enlargement, then you can go about resecting it. If not, don't attempt to do gingivectomy. And areas of aesthetic compromise, wherever you feel that it's going to compromise the aesthetics, then gingivectomy is not the procedure of option. In case of shallow palatal walls and prominent external oblique ridges, then don't do. And then the other contraindications are treatment of intrabony pockets and patients with poor oral hygiene. What are the advantages of gingivectomy? Predictability, simplicity in the procedure, and then ease of pocket elimination, good access, and favorable aesthetic results. The disadvantages include it has to heal by secondary intention, bleeding postoperatively, and loss of keratinized gingiva, and an inability to treat underlying osseous deformities. How do you do gingivectomy? Let's go into the procedure. The pre surgical phase first, you remove all the local factors, control the inflammation, and then after the initial healing, you, uh, you measure the zone of keratinized gingiva. And then, after the adequate local anesthesia, you measure the pockets and make sure that the pockets are not beyond your mucogingival junction. And then, also determine the osseous topography in that area by doing bone sounding. And then, you do what is called as a pocket marking. The pocket marking is done using a special kind of a pocket marker called the crane Kaplan's pocket marker, wherein you have two pairs, you have your left and the right, you have a pair of instruments, you have your left pocket marker and you have the right pocket marker. Now these are used to mark bleeding points which outline the base of the pocket. So you place the pocket marker into the gingival sulcus and then you go till the depth of the pocket and then mark the bleeding points. So if you can see the picture, there's a kind of a tooth shaped appearance onto the pocket marker which is placed. Now the tooth, uh, toothed appearance of your pocket marker will come onto the external surface of the gingiva and the other side of the pocket marker will go into the sulcus. So now you press both the areas to give your bleeding points. This will outline the base of the pocket. 
And once that is done, you decide on what you want to do, whether you want to give continuous incisions or you want to give discontinuous incisions. The picture here shows you very well what are the how do you give continuous incisions and how do you give discontinuous incis incisions. What is the type of incision that you should give for gingivectomy procedure? Always remember you have to give an external bevel incision to you for your gingivectomy procedure, wherein you are placing the blade away from your alveolar crest. So the angulation of your blade, if you can see the picture, that it is the bevel, the incision is apical to the perforation by the pocket marker. As I told, incisions can be continuous or discontinuous. Both the incisions are begin at the most terminal point of uh, the tooth and are continued till you reach or the incision is completed. And then incision you can give with scalpel or gingivectomy knives, especially your Kirkland's knife, you can use to give your gingivectomy incisions. The incisions usually begin apical to your bleeding points. And then you give an external bevel incision wherein the blade is placed at a 45 degree angle towards or against your alveolar bone. This picture shows you all the, all the steps of gingivectomy. Once the tissue is free, and then what do you do? You use a scale, or you use a, a sickle, you use a scaler or a curette in order to remove the interdental or the uh, tissue that has been freed from the uh, incisions. And then you perform a scaling and root planing, and then if needed, do a gingivoplasty. That final contouring of the tissue is established during using your scissors or tissue nippers or diamond stones are used to thin the tissue on the interradicular surface. This establishes a proper ideal contour. What is the healing? Now post uh, gingivectomy procedure, probably you can give him a, you can place a periodontal pack because you're exposing the raw wound area. How does it heal after the surgical gingivectomy? First thing, the initial response would be the formation of a protective surface clot. Then following that, the underlying tissues become acutely inflamed with some kind of a tissue necrosis and then the clot slowly is getting replaced by your granulation tissue. After that, within 24 hours, increase in the new connective tissue cells, mainly your angioblast means there is neoangiogenesis happening just beneath the surface layer of inflammation and necrosis. After about 12 to 24 hours, epithelial cells at the margin of the wound try, uh, they start proliferating and they try to migrate over the granulation tissue that is formed. And then within about 24 to 36 hours, the epithelial activity increases in the margins and reaches a peak level. And the new epithelial cells are start arising from the basal and the deep spinous layers of the epithelium. And then one fine day, after seven days, there's a complete union of the epithelial cells. In the meanwhile, on the third day, numerous young fibroblasts are starting to pro uh, proliferate uh, different, uh, in the area. Uh, the new fibroblasts are, sta are starting to proliferate. A high vascular or highly vascular granulation tissue grows coronally, creating a new free gingival margin. The capillaries derived from the blood vessels of the periodontal ligament migrate into your granulation tissue and within two weeks the entire connective tissue or uh, blood vessels are formed. Within about 5 to 14 days the surface epithelialization is completed and then four weeks the entire keratinization process of your epithelium is completed and complete epithelial repair you need about one month and then complete repair of the connective tissue takes about seven weeks. Now there, other than the surgical method, that is other than using your surgical blades, you can also perform your gingivectomy using electro, electrocautery, electrosurgical units, or you can also use uh, perform your gingivectomy using lasers, or you can also perform during using some chemical agents. Let's see during uh, by uh, electrosurgery, what are the major advantages? It permits adequate contouring of the tissues and also helps in control of bleeding or hemorrhage. What are the disadvantages? It produces a bad smell. Apart from that, it produces lots of heat. And then if the, titch if the tip touches the bone, then there can be an irreparable damage to the bone. The treatment causes, again, a bad odor, as I told. You can't use it in patients who are having cardiac pacemakers. What is the technique? The, the procedure is performed with a needle electrode, which is supplemented with a small ovoid loop or a diamond shaped electrodes for the festooning. A blended cutting and coagulating current is used and the electrode is moved in a shaving motion. 
If you're doing a laser gingivectomy, you can use lots of lasers. You can use carbon dioxide laser or your NDYG, uh, NDYG laser, that is neodymium yttrium aluminium garnet laser with a wavelength of about 1064 nanometers. If the carbon dioxide laser has been utilized for the excision of the gingival tissue. Gingivectomy by chemo, uh, chemo surgery or the chemicals, you can, what are the chemicals that you can use is 5% formaldehyde, paraformaldehyde and potassium hydroxide. You don't know the depth of penetration of these drugs, so it's not, that, uh, it's not used to great extent. Well, so that those are the disadvantages that you don't know the depth of the drug penetration, so you can't control it and the gingival remodeling cannot be accomplished. So to conclude, a good therapist knows the advantages and disadvantages of the procedure that he's selecting and then where and what are the indications of that particular technique and what would be the advantages of the particular, uh, the particular technique that you're using. Whether you want to use a scalpel, what are the advantages? If you want to use lasers for that particular patient, so you have to, uh, a good therapist or a good clinician would know what is the right choice of method. That would conclude your gingivectomy. Thank you.